And he triumphed over them in it, nailing all the law, the ordinances that was against us to his cross. I want you to think about someone who brings down the enemies in the last days. Here we have a story of Samson. Samson was taken custody by the five lords of the Philistines. And they take Samson into the temple of Dagon. Boy, think about that for a minute. Into the temple of Dagon. And the five lords of the Philistines are on a porch over him. Anytime you see something over something else, it's raining over them. Death reigns over this. They had a crown of thorns on Jesus' head. It was raining over him, and it rains over us too, because we're under the curse of death because of our sin. So here the five lords of the Philistines are over Samson. And here's what Samson said in Judges chapter 16, verse 30. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Christ destroyed in his death, just like Samson, the power of death at the cross. See, the devil said, I'm going to kill Jesus. What he didn't know was, is that in killing Jesus, he was killing himself. I love it. And all of this was prophesied specifically. The events that took place on the cross was prophesied in the 500th chapter of the King James Bible. It's Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. They pierced my hands and feet. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. What a beautiful Bible we have. And some people say, well, I don't believe the Bible. I don't believe the English Bible's inspired. I'm pretty sure it is. Well, I don't think the chapter and verse divisions mean anything. I'm pretty sure they are, because not only the God who created the Bible, who spoke the Bible, who preserves the Bible, God is in charge of the order of the Bible. There is nothing about this Bible that is strictly the handiwork of mankind. God's sovereignty extends over His Word from the beginning of creation until now and through to the end of time. God's sovereignty extends over His Word. Remember a while ago, we saw that whales were created on the fifth day. And I told you to think of a story in the Bible that had to do with whales. Yes, yes. Jesus said, for as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, I'm going to take you back to the story of Jonah because remember, we saw this thing, death is swallowed up in victory. I'm going to show you the miracle of the King James Bible. That's what this is about. It's the King James Code. There's a, there's a beautiful, beautiful tapestry woven into the pages of our King James Bible that reveals so much. And I'm going to show you this because in the days of Jonah, look at what the Bible says. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. By the blood of Jesus Christ and the cross that he was crucified on and by his resurrection. You see, because even Jonah came out of the whale's belly three days later. That is a beautiful picture. That's the number three. It's a beautiful picture of the resurrection. But notice the language structure. Death is swallowed up in victory. The victory of everything in the world was at the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, the very next verse here, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55, remember that number, says, O death, where is thy sting? Now I want you to think of things in the Bible that sting. Think about it. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Remember the five Philistine lords, and they're in a cave, they're in a pit. Now they're going to be let out. Why are they going to be let out? 
Revelation chapter 9, verse 3, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions have power. Scorpions have the power of a sting. What is it that we're afraid of scorpions? Are we afraid of their little tentacles? Are we afraid of their little legs? No. We're afraid of the sting that they have. That sting is the sting of death. And then notice verse 10, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and their sting, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Now I'm going to start bringing some things together for you here. Remember that the number five deals with the transformation of us who are appointed to die, and yet we're not going to die. We're going to be, we're going to live forever. We're going to be transformed or translated into heaven without ever seeing death. The dead in Christ are going to be given life again. And they're going to live again in the last days for all of eternity. So think about this. Because during this five-month time, the sting of death is upon everybody. And men want to die. And they can't. Because I'm telling you, there's a move afoot right now. One of the conspiracies that we're looking at is the idea of giving men immortality. Remember, in the Garden of Eden, the thing that, that uh, Lucifer promised Eve with five words, Thou shalt not surely die. He promised her that she would escape death with five words. Think about it. So man seeks to escape death. Why? Because man doesn't want to go to hell because they know they're going. And so they want to escape death. And so these scorpions come out. They have the sting of death. And all of a sudden man wants to die for five months and he cannot Now, I want to go back to this star falling from heaven. You've seen several of our videos. You know my theory on this, and I think it's right. I saw a star fall from heaven. The fifth trumpet sounds, I saw a star fall from heaven. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? The same language is used here. And we've used this illustration before, and I'm going to connect it for you. Because there's this movie called Starman. You see the image of a star falling from heaven to the earth. Jeff Bridges plays this alien who takes on using DNA, takes on human form. I want you to think about that. Take on human form, human form using DNA. He is the bridegroom. Uh, Karen Allen is the bride. They come together in fornication without marriage and produce a child that is going to be a great teacher upon planet Earth. And all of this is associated with the number five. Oh, by the way, the word Satan... Mentioned 55 times in the King James Bible. Devils mentioned exactly 55 times in the King James Bible. Now back to Isaiah chapter 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. His five-point plan, I will be like the Most High. Now get that. Satan is all he tries to be like the most high which means he mimics God and so everything that you need to understand about the kingdom of the devil in the last days you can understand by understanding the kingdom of God in the last days and the numbers that it's associated with the symbols the typology and the doctrines that are associated with and that five point plan that Lucifer has has a symbol attached to it and here it is It is the symbol that Church's Satan founder, Anton LaVey, placed upon his Satanic Bible. Now, I want you to get this. Here is the real Word of God. And in this, we see the grace of God. We see the joining together of the bride and the bridegroom. We see God's seat of authority. We see His victory over sin and death and the law. And uh, all of those good things. The Prince of Peace. And here we have emblazoned upon the Satanic Bible, this goat of Mendes, who is the Prince of Peace of darkness, the exact opposite of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the 1880s, Eliphas Levi, author of Transcendental Magic, used this symbol of the pentagram as a symbol for transformation. Now think about that. Transcendental Magic was all about transforming man into gods. That is the exact opposite of the translation of the Gentile church, translating us from this life and to the next. And here again, their symbol for transformation is associated with the pentagram. Notice here that he has tetragrammaton uh, listed here. And we're going to look at that. That has to do with the, the so-called sacred name of God or the ineffable name of God. And we're going to see that a little bit later on as a symbol 
for transformation. The very symbol of transformation itself in the occult world, uh, penned by Eliphas Levi, is the symbol of Baphomet. Baphomet represents a lot of things. Notice that he is half human, half beast. He has opposites all about him, and ablazoned upon his forehead is his symbol of transformation, the symbol of Lucifer's five-point plan that he will be like the Most High. Now, I want you to notice that on this symbol of Baphomet, he has a horn. He has two horns, one on each side, and then one coming out of the middle of his head. Notice Daniel 8, verse 5. And as I was considering, behold, an he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth. There's that goat there. And touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. That notable horn is the horn of the Antichrist in the last days, pictured here by Eliphas Levi in the symbol of Baphomet. In the scriptures, in Matthew chapter 25, which again is 5 times 5, we have the story of the separation of the sheep and the goats. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall set them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Here again, associated with the number 5, the righteous That word righteous and Christ 555 times together there in the Bible. The righteous are taken into heaven. The goats, symbolized by Baphomet, the goat of Mendes, sent into everlasting punishment. It didn't say everlasting death. It said everlasting punishment. All of this associated with the number five. The question I'd ask is, which number five are you going to follow? You're going to follow Christ, the Prince of Peace, Are you going to follow the Antichrist, the Prince of Darkness, and be sent away and separated as a goat to eternal punishment? In Eliphaz Levi's book on black magic, he talked about the goat of Mendes. He he said, we approach the mystery of black magic. We are about to confront, even in his own sanctuary, the black god of the Sabbath. I want you to remember that. The formidable goat of Mendes. He later goes on to say, in black magic, the devil is the great magical agent employed for evil purposes by a perverse will. Notice that he, he mentioned in his book, Black Magic, the black god of the Sabbath. You remember a guy by the name of Ozzy Osbourne, don't you? He originally started out with a group called Black Sabbath. There was another rock group called Rush. They used the symbol of the pentagram on their albums. There was even a rock group, a British rock group, called Pentagram. Now, the occult meaning of the pentagram is very revealing concerning everything that we've studied so far. A symbol of the devil's kingdom in the last days, a symbol of his five-point plan, a symbol of his plan for the transformation of of mankind. Notice what Masonic author Manly P. Hall said concerning the pentagram. He said the pentagram is the figure of the microcosm, the magical formula of man. It is the one rising out of the four, the human soul rising from the bondage of the animal nature. It is the true light, the star of the morning. It marks the location of five mysterious centers of force, the awakening of which is the supreme secret of white magic. Now, I'm going to talk about a little bit about this, this pentagram and what he was getting at here. He mentioned that it's the one rising out of the four. The four that he's referring to are what's called the elements, the four elements. You might have heard about this uh, from years gone by. It is referred to...